So we've introduced our first sufficient statistic um, that will enter the formula for optimal government spending. Let's now move to the, uh, you know, that was the elasticity of substitution between public and private goods, so which describes how easy it is to replace private goods and services with public goods and services. Um, so that's gonna, going to be important when we move away from the optimal, you know, from the kind of efficient allocation of public and private goods, and we're moving away from it to stimulate the economy. It's important to know how easy it is to replace one by the other. Now, the other uh, solution statistic that's going to be very important is the unemployment uh, multiplier. And that's what we're going to discuss now. That is, it's the impact of, uh, so I call it unemployment multiplier. It's called unemployment multiplier by opposition to say output multiplier. So an output multiplier is the impact of public spending on output. But here, what we're going to focus on is the impact of public spending on unemployment. And that's why we call this sufficient statistic unemployment multiplier. So that's going to be a second very important sufficient statistic that will show up in our formula. So let's discuss that briefly. This is our second sufficient statistic. It is the unemployment unemployment multiplier, and since it's a multiplier, we'll just call it uh, M. So what is the definition of this unemployment multiplier? Well, the unemployment multiplier is just simply M is equal to minus du um, dg. So it's a derivative of the unemployment rate with respect to G. And G, remember, is a share of uh, the labor force that's uh, devoted to uh, the production of public goods. And so this is just really capturing how effective public spending is at controlling the unemployment rate, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so the formal interpretation is the change is the change in unemployment rate. And so change in unemployment rate, that's in percentage point when the share of the labor force devoted to public production increases by uh, one percentage point. So you increase the share of the labor force devoted to public production by one percentage point, you look at the impact on the unemployment rate, that's going to be um, your multiplier. <clears throat> and so in fact, because there is a, so the idea is that when you spend more, you expect the unemployment rate to drop. So you have a negative relationship between unemployment rate and uh, public spending. And that's why you would put a minus here to make sure that um, our multiplier is going to be uh, positive. Um, so in fact, M could even be more accurate. M is a, is a decrease in unemployment rate when the share of the labor force devoted to public production increases by one percentage point. Okay, um, and so the, the minor sign that we have it's because we want to have a positive multiplier when an you know an increase in government spending leads to less uh, less unemployment. Uh, so, of, you know, you might wonder how is it that public spending or public employment affects the unemployment rate? Well, this, you know, we understand that in all the types of models that we are working with, in this uh, 
you know, any model, like for instance, it's a matching model we've considered. Um, like take, you know, the basic model or the dynamic model or even the two market model. When the government spending changes that affects aggregate demand, when aggregate demand moves, uh, you will have a different level of tightness in your economy. And of course, uh, tightness determines directly the unemployment rate through the aggregate supply, which is just the same as the beverage curve. And so, you know, when you, uh, when you change G, the idea is that a change in G leads to a change in AD leads to a change in, you know, our key uh, variable of aggregate activity tightness. And of course, when tightness change, that means a change in U. So that's the logic. But here you see that's the beauty of the sufficient statistic approach is that I don't need to specify the structure of aggregate demand. I don't need uh, to specify the structure of the aggregate supply. Um, I don't need to specify the price uh, mechanism. The only thing that I need to know is that I'm in a beverage, uh, I'm in a beverage simulation framework. So because the beverage framework, I know there's some unemployment. And of course, that unemployment in the model, it's going to be determined by aggregate demand, aggregate supply. I'm in a simulation framework, so I know that I have this um, public spending. And of course, public spending, you know, if the government decides to hire more workers, that's going to affect, you know, that's going to affect aggregate demand. Um, and so I know that something will happen in the model and it's very likely that the unemployment rate is going to change. Of course, there's a, in some models, you may have a special case in which the unemployment rate doesn't respond to um, public spending, public employment, but then, you know, this is just a multiplier, uh, M is equal to zero. So M equals zero, this is when unemployment rate uh, does not respond to public spending. You know, and that's a possibility. That's covered by the model. But, uh, you know, if we look at empirical evidence, actually, we'll see that uh, unemployment tends to drop when uh, public spending goes up. So in fact, uh, the case that's more likely to be realistic is M positive when the unemployment rate uh, drops when uh, public spending goes up. Uh, and this is a realistic case in the US. Um, but, you know, and in fact, here the, the, the framework could also allow M to be negative. It's totally fine when you would ex increase public spending and somehow the unemployment rate would also go up. That's something that we can consider. So the bottom line, the, you know, this is why it's a sufficient statistic approach that we don't really need to specify much about how the demand operates. The only thing we need to know is that when you change public spending, you're going to affect your unemployment rate. And that's captured by this. Uh, that's captured by this statistic M. And we'll see that for the welfare analysis, that's really the only thing that we need to do. Um, and so that's really uh, what's nice here about solution statistics. It encompasses a broad range of models. You know, any model in which an unemployment rate government spending are link is covered. Uh, well, you know, any beverage and model, because we'll see, we'll make use of the beverage curve. And furthermore, I, you know, I highlight this statistic because that's something that we can hope to measure in the data. We know that uh, we can hope to measure how uh, public spending changes, what the impact on the unemployment rate. Uh, we have techniques to measure this type of stuff. Um, and something that I should also say is that, you know, when you talk about uh, when you talk about uh, stimulus packages, people often bring in the multiplier, trying to figure out oh, what's a multiplier. And we'll see that here in our analysis, actually, the multiplier, the unemployment multiplier, will play a key role. Uh, will play a key role in the welfare analysis. So in, indeed, the unemployment multiplier will be a relevant statistic for uh, for welfare. Um, and it's not just for, you know, people always ask, oh, is the multiplier more than one, less than one, the output multiplier. Um, but, you know, here it, it's going to be like, because from a welfare perspective, we need to know how unemployment responds to public spending that the multiplier will show up. Um, so uh, this this is what it is, and we'll see why it matters for policies this multiplier.